Section 2. Roman Catholic Doctrine Concerning the Scriptures. On this subject Romanists agree with Protestants, 1. In teaching the plenary inspiration and consequent infallible authority of the sacred writings. Of these writings the Council of Trent says that God is their author, and that they were written by the dictation of the Holy Spirit, Spiritu Sancto Dictanti. 2. They agree with us in receiving into the sacred canon all the books which we regard as of divine authority. Romanists differ from Protestants in regard to the scriptures, 1. In receiving into the canon certain books which Protestants do not admit to be inspired, namely, Tobit, Judith, Syrac, parts of Esther, the wisdom of Solomon, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd books of the Maccabees, the 3rd book of Maccabees, however, is not included in the Vulgate, Baruch, the hymn of the three children, Susanna, and Bell and the dragon. These books are not all included by name in the list given by the Council of Trent. Several of them are parts of the books there enumerated. Thus, the hymn of the three children, Susanna, and Bell and the dragon, appear as parts of the book of Daniel. Some modern theologians of the Romish church refer all the apocryphal books to what they call, the second canon, and admit that they are not of equal authority with those belonging to the first canon. The Council of Trent, however, makes no such distinction. Incompleteness of the Scriptures 2. A second point of difference is that Romanists deny, and Protestants affirm, the completeness of the sacred scriptures. That is, Protestants maintain that all the extant supernatural revelations of God, which constitute the rule of faith to his church, are contained in his written word. Romanists, on the other hand, hold that some doctrines which all Christians are bound to believe, are only imperfectly revealed in the scriptures, that others are only obscurely intimated, and that others are not therein contained at all. The preface to the Romish Catechism, Quest. 12, says, Omnis doctrini ratio, quae fidelibus tradenda sit, verbo dei continenta, quod in scripturam traditionesque distributum estimated. Bellarmine says expressly, Numbers acerimus, in scripturis non continere express totum doctrinum necessarium, siv de fide siv de moribus, et proin preta verbum dei scriptum require iesum verbum dei non scriptum, i.e. Divinas et Apostolicas Traditions. On this point the Romish theologians are of one mind, but what the doctrines are, which are thus imperfectly revealed in the scriptures, or merely implied, or entirely omitted, has never been authoritatively decided by the Church of Rome. The theologians of that church, with more or less unanimity, refer to one or the other of these classes the following doctrines, 1. The Canon of Scripture. 2. The Inspiration of the Sacred Writers. 3. The full doctrine of the Trinity. 4. The personality and divinity of the Holy Spirit. 5. Infant baptism. 6. The observance of Sunday as the Christian Sabbath. 7. The threefold orders of the ministry. 8. The government. Of the church by bishops. 9. The perpetuity of the apostleship. 10. The grace of orders. 11. The sacrificial nature of the Eucharist. 12. The seven sacraments. 13. Purgatory. It lies in the interests of the advocates of tradition to depreciate the scriptures, and to show how much the church would lose if she had no other source of knowledge of divine truth but the written word. On this subject the author of number 85 of the Oxford Tracts, when speaking even of essential doctrines, says, it is a near thing that they are in the scriptures at all. The wonder is that they are all there. Humanly judging they would not be there but for God's interposition, and, therefore, since they are there by a sort of accident, it is not strange they shall be but latent there, and only indirectly producible thence. The Gospel doctrine, says the same writer, is but indirectly and covertly recorded in Scripture under the surface. Tradition is always represented by Romanists as not only the interpreter, but the complement of the Scriptures. The Bible, therefore, is, according to the Church of Rome, incomplete. It does not contain all the Church is bound to believe, nor are the doctrines which it does contain therein fully or clearly made known. Obscurity of the Scriptures 3. The third point of difference between Romanists and Protestants relates to the perspicuity of Scripture, and the right of private judgment. Protestants hold that the Bible, being addressed to the people, is sufficiently perspicuous to be understood by them under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, and that they are entitled and bound to search the Scripture, and to judge for themselves what is its true meaning. 
Romanists, on the other hand, teach that the scriptures are so obscure that they need a visible, present, and infallible interpreter, and that the people, being incompetent to understand them, are bound to believe whatever doctrines the church, through its official organs, declares to be true and divine. On this subject the Council of Trent, Cess 4, says, Ad coercenda petulantia ingenia discernit, synodus, ut nemo, sui prudentiae inixus, in rebus fide et morum ad edificationum doctrini Christiani pertinentium, sacram scripturam ad suas sensus contorquens contra um sensum, quern tenuit et tenet sancta mater ecclesia, cugis is judicare de vero sensu et interpretation scripturarum sanctarum. Ort isham contra unanimum consensum patrum ipsam scripturam sacram interpretari audiat. Etiam si hujus modi interpretations nullo unquam tempori in lusum. Idende forent. Qui contravenerent, per ordinarios. Declaranta et poenis a year statutis punianta. Bellarmine says, non ignorabat deus multas in ecclesia exoraturas difficultate circa fidem. Debut igitu judicem alicum ecclesiae providere. Atis judex non potest es scriptura, nec spiritus revelans privatus, nec princeps secularis, igitu princeps ecclesiasticus vel solus vel certi cum concilio et consensu coepiscoporum. From this view of the obscurity of scripture it follows that the use of the sacred volume by the people, is discountenanced by the Church of Rome, although its use has never been prohibited by any general council. Such prohibitions, however, have repeatedly been issued by the popes, as by Gregory VII, Innocent III, Clemens XI, and Pius IV, who made the liberty to read any vernacular version of the scriptures, dependent on the permission of the priest. There have been, however, many Romish prelates and theologians who encouraged the general reading of the Bible. The spirit of the Latin Church and the effects of its teaching are painfully manifested by the fact that the scriptures are practically inaccessible to the mass of the people in strictly Roman, Catholic countries. The Latin Vulgate 4. The fourth point of difference concerns the authority due to the Latin Vulgate. On this subject the Council of Trent, Cess 4, says, Synodus considerans non param utilitatis accedere posse ecclesiae dei. Si ex omnibus latinus editionibus quae circumferenta, sacrorum librorum, quinum pro authentica habenda sit, inotescat, statuit et declarat, ut hic ipsa vitus et vulgata editio, quae longo tot secularum ususu in ipsa ecclesia probatoriist, in publicis lectionibus, disputationibus, preeducationibus et expositionibus pro authentica habita et nemo illum regisir quovis. Pretextu audiat vel presumat. The meaning of this decree is a matter of dispute among Romanists themselves. Some of the more modern and liberal of their theologians say that the council simply intended to determine which among several Latin versions, was to be used in the service of the church. They contend that it was not meant to forbid appeal to the original. Scriptures, or to place the Vulgate on a par with them in. Authority. The earlier and stricter Romanists take the ground that the Synod did intend to forbid an appeal to the Hebrew and Greek scriptures, and to make the Vulgate the ultimate authority. The language of the Council seems to favour this interpretation. The Vulgate was to be used. Not only for the ordinary purposes of public instruction, but in all theological discussions, and in all works of exegesis.